During our secret shopper project, we discovered that while some pre-built gaming systems offer a solid value in terms of their performance, with tier one providers like HP and Dell, you can often run into proprietary parts, limited upgradability and configurability, and questionable software loadouts that can affect the overall experience. So the popularity of machines that are built from retail parts by smaller system integrators like iBuyPower or MainGear is understandable. Boutique builders in particular don't always hit the best performance per dollar, but what most of these shops offer is a high degree of customizability and more transparency into the actual components you're buying. Now, a lot of you watching our channel would look down on the idea of buying a pre-built computer. But consider this, what if a well-known and respected manufacturer came out offering the type of system that would be similar to what you would end up configuring for yourself? And at a reasonable price, offering a turnkey solution with a solid warranty. Well, that is what Corsair tried to do with the Vengeance Gaming PC 5180. Let's see if it's worth your hard-earned money. Thursday Boots is a bootstrapped startup that handcrafts boots using the highest quality materials and then sells them at an honest price. What a business model, right? They offer free shipping and returns and you can check them out at thursdayboots.com LTT. We'll have that linked below. So let us cover the four pillars of any gaming system. Price, quality, performance, and support, which together help us determine the value of this thing. After spreadsheeting the components all together and checking non-sale prices through both Amazon and Newegg, it turned out that the prices of the parts came to just over $2,100. This means that Corsair is marking up this machine 12 to 13% or about $300 over regular street pricing. But it's not time to make a final judgment here just yet. First, let's dig a little deeper. Corsair's markup also includes assembly and two years of warranty support on the completed system. And check this out, Corsair has multiple RMA centers for their machines, so depending where you're located, you might not end up having to ship the machine, which is currently only available directly from Corsair, all the way back to them if you run into an issue. What's even better is they'll cover shipping both to and from the service depot, and they'll even send you replacement packaging if you tossed out your original box. That's pretty rad, at least on paper. When it comes to the next pillar, quality. Well, we'll start with that aforementioned packaging. Our rig arrived protected with open celled foam and had this here contraption to ensure that the graphics card wouldn't snap out of the slot. You know, it's Kind of ghetto looking, but hey, if it works, it isn't stupid, so no complaints there. Cabling was neat on the front and tightly bundled on the back chamber, and we didn't have really, I mean, any gripes with the machine's construction quality overall. We did wonder why they would use a 240 millimeter AIO to cool a non-K processor in a B series board, but the answer here is most likely for the looks and a single 120 millimeter cooler would have made the system look kind of asymmetrical. The only thing that really stood out here was Corsair's use of an 80 plus bronze 750 watt power supply. Now to be clear, it's a decent second gen unit from their CX series and it carries a five year warranty. So I guess the logic here was that more people would care to have 750 watts than would care if it had higher efficiency, which is a trade that they could have easily made. Moving on to the performance, in a massive surprise to absolutely no one, in games, our machine performed exactly as a Core i7-8700 plus an RTX 2080 should. Turbo boost on our CPU worked correctly. Our GPU reached anywhere from 1935 to 1950 megahertz while gaming, and we never heard more than a low hum from the direction of the tower. No cooling issues and no weird fan ramping behavior or anything like that to report. It's almost like Corsair has a lot of experience when it comes to PC cooling. Now as for storage, our SSD uses a Fizon controller and it sits on an X2 PCI Express slot. So as expected, that puts it somewhere in between a SATA SSD and an enthusiast class NVMe one. 
And while Corsair applied no performance optimizations to the UEFI BIOS, no factory profile saved even, everything worked out of the box without an issue. Now, when it comes to pre-purchase and post-purchase support, well, we didn't have a chance to actually test the latter due to this being a review unit, which was not secret shoppered. So we couldn't stage a, a tech support scenario or anything like that. Maybe in the future? Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see that. And as for pre-purchase support, well, disappointingly, it actually does not exist at all. You see, Corsair presently has just four machines available on their site, all of them non-configurable, with the other three being Corsair 1s, with the closest configuration there commanding a much higher price while using the same class of graphics card. Maybe, okay, conspiracy theory moment here, maybe Corsair doesn't want to have a sales rep, because that person would just spend all day downselling customers to the vengeance, I don't know. That's pure speculation, anyway. Let's get back to the value conversation because it's the most complicated part of this video. Compared to configuring a system over on iBuyPower, trying to include as many of the same components as possible, Corsair's pricing actually looks really solid for our Vengeance PC. But that doesn't necessarily mean I'm happy with it. Before I can explain why, we need a little bit of history. Now, in spite of their wide portfolio covering the vast majority of PC components, from cooling to cases to RAM and storage, Corsair surprised everyone when they introduced the Corsair One, a fully integrated, ready-to-ship system, like Windows pre-installed and everything, for gamers. Not because anyone thought they weren't capable, I mean, obviously there are plenty of people at Corsair who know how to assemble a gaming tower, but rather, for business reasons. By branching out into completed systems, Corsair stood to alienate the same partners, uh, system integrators like Main Gear and iBuyPower, who I mentioned before, that they rely on for a significant chunk of their business by effectively competing with them directly and potentially unfairly, since Corsair obviously has more profit margin on a Corsair power supply than a reseller of Corsair power supplies could. Now, Corsair's story at the time was, the one is unique. It's too difficult to assemble to offer this chassis as a standalone case, so it doesn't really compete with anyone else's offerings. But like, this one? This is the Vengeance PC a fully built gaming PC from Corsair using all off the shelf components. So, is it a good value? Well, it is if you were gonna buy exactly these parts anyway, but it's not if you were the kind of person who was more likely to spend their hard earned money on raw performance. So Corsair was in kind of a unique position here to use some of the extra profit margin that they gained by being the manufacturer of both the components and the finished system to deliver great performance and flashy aftermarket looks. But by choosing a non-overclockable CPU and a B360 motherboard at this price point, I do feel like they fell a little short of that goal if that was their goal. And you know, I have to wonder if maybe this was on purpose to avoid disrupting the market. Whatever reason there was for it, the good news is that we have no qualms about the quality of the system or Corsair's ongoing existence if you ever need support. So as they continue to expand into this business, I think Vengeance gaming PCs are gonna get only more interesting to gamers as time go on. That is the ones that don't feel like DIYing, either for themselves, or for their friends, because as it goes with pre-builds, you could get a faster computer if you built it yourself. Then again, maybe Corsair doesn't care. I'm sure they'd be happy to sell you their components too. Excuse me. Mastrop's vast curved gaming monitor is 35 inches of gaming bliss. It's an ultra wide 3440 by 1440 display with two millisecond response times, and it's got free sync. It runs at a maximum 100 hertz refresh rate, and it's got a 2500 to one contrast ratio. Go check it out at the link in the video description for your own seamless visual experience, whether you're gaming, working, watching a movie, or just browsing. 
So thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should definitely join.